How are we going to have cattle in the church? <laughs> Turn with me in your Bibles. We're letting the kids, kids' church go on back to kids' church. And uh, we actually had a couple of seven-year-olds in this group. We thought, but uh, man, that'd be a ringer. You know, you put a seven-year-old against five-year-olds, and that, they, they're going to win. They're going to win. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5, if you would. This being a rodeo themed service today, I'm going to talk to you about J.B. Mooney. Now, I'm not under any illusion that this man's going to be deacon of the month material. Anybody knows J.B. Mooney? Eh, probably not. But this is an interesting fellow. How do you know he's a pretty good bull rider? Okay, so those of you that don't know, J.B. Mooney was a really good bull rider. He was, he was, he was, uh, he was the real deal. As a matter of fact, um, and if you want to do a deeper dive into today's uh, sermon, you can actually go online and uh, look up this article right here in the Washington Post. They actually talk about uh, uh, J.B. Mooney, and, and uh, it's, it's it's pretty interesting. It's rather lengthy, but I think you'll enjoy it. For those in cowboy culture, the name J.B. Mooney in bull riding is, uh, is, is nothing new. Uh, matter of fact, those of you that have watched little TikTok and Instagram things, you'll hear him say, he's a $7 million bull rider, you know, and that sort of thing. Well, J.B. Mooney was called by Newsweek uh, magazine. He was dubbed the Michael Jordan of bulls. He was that good. How do you see the irony in that statement? Anybody besides me? Michael Jordan, Bulls. Get with me after service. I'll paint the picture for you. It'll, it'll make a lot more sense. He was known as the Dragon Slayer. And uh, Mooney was actually the, probably the first guy to get stinking rich riding Bulls. I mean stinking rich. His total purse count at the end of his career was uh, around $7.4 million. And he's tied for the most victories on the PBR circuit with 32. Now my question is, because I didn't have a chance to look this up, who is he tied with, Rusty? Do we know? Who? Savano Alves? And, and it's not your brother, Mike Bandy? I was giving him a plug, Mike Bandy Road Bulls. The, uh, but 32 PBR victories, $7.4 million. It's reported from about 2007 to 2018, J.B. Mooney rode every ranked bull uh, that there was in that time period. Rode every one of them. What set him apart was apparently J.B. Mooney didn't want to just ride any bull. He wanted the worst of the worst. He wanted the rankest bulls. He wanted the stuff that uh, probably scared the liver out of most people. Now, as is common in this particular event, J.B. Mooney had a lot of injuries in his career going all the way back to his childhood. You can see some of those up there. Uh, in reading, he has one screw that has 13 anchors. I don't understand what that is about, but there's a screw with 13 anchors in his right shoulder. There's a plate with screws in his left hand, a plate in his pelvis, broke the jaw on both sides, fractured an eye socket, had staples up one side of his head. How do you know that's just bull riding? How do you know that ain't for me? Man, I'm a wuss with hernia surgery. I can't imagine what I'd be like with, with all of that. But uh, so he paid a price. But on September the 6th, September the 6th of last year, 2023, in Lewiston, Idaho, Mooney unknowingly got on the last bull of his career. It was his very last ride. It was a, it was a black bull by the name of Arctic Assassin. Arctic Assassin. The, uh, according to the reports, and you can watch the video if you haven't already, the bull took two big hops, and then he just slingshotted J.B. Mooney and uh, who went flying through the air, landed on his head, and wound up fracturing his neck. Six days later, on September the 12th, 
At the age, the ripe old age of 37, J.B. Mooney announced his retirement. 37 in bull riding years would be a lot like 37 in football years. You're an old man at the sport. You're an old man at the sport. And uh, after that, he, he said, this is it. I can't do it no more. Now, this is where the story takes an interesting turn in J.B. Mooney's life. Two weeks after that, okay, so roughly a month after his accident, he's back home at his house in Stephenville, Texas, because that's where he lives, and he's convalescing with a neck brace on, and uh, Mooney picks up the phone, and he got, calls a guy by the name of Matt uh, Sharping. Matt Sharping is a rough stock contractor out of Minnesota who happens to be a half owner of the Arctic Assassin. And so he calls him up on the phone and says, Hey, what are you going to do with that black bull? Sharping replies, Well, we think we're going to retire him. To which Booney says, Well, I want him. Cue the ominous silence. You know the next question. Sharping replies, why? <laughs> why do you want this bull? Do you need a new belt? you need a new wallet? What is it? Mooney replied, I want to say that I was the last guy who ever wrote him. That he retired me. So now I want to retire him. So in January of this year, January of this year, they loaded Arctic Assassin up in a trailer and drove him from Minnesota all the way down to Stephenville, Texas, and unloaded him in a quiet hillside on the Mooney farm away from the riding arena. Because J.B. Mooney has gotten into the team competition with PBR. Matter of fact, I think they gave him the, uh, was it the Oklahoma Wildcatters? And, uh, but they put Arctic Assassin away from all that to keep him calm, keep him away from it. And uh, as a matter of fact, you can go by there and you're going to see a picture just like this. You just might drive by that farm and see J.B. Mooney on a bucket scratching that bull that broke his neck. And this was his comment, the article that you could download and read later. He said this comment to the reporter. He said, of all the mean son of a guns I got on in my career, and this dog gentle one is the one that ended it all. Now, I want you to look at that picture right there because it's pretty interesting. It's a picture of two beings that should be mortal enemies. They shouldn't have nothing to do with each other. Ought to be producing a lot of negative emotions except one of those in that picture chose grace. One of those in the picture chose grace. Not me, honey. If that bull broke my neck, I will tell you right now, I would have me a skin rug I'd have meat in the freezer. I don't care how tough and nasty it was. I'm going to eat every last bite of him from tail to ear. I'm going to make a wallet. I'm going to make a belt. Might even make my wife a new purse. I'm going to get some payback off that thing. But this is actually, this picture right here is the perfect picture of who God is to us. Romans chapter 5, starting in verse number 6, says this. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us who? Sinners. Jesus didn't die for you in your salvation state. He died for you as a sinner. Now, verse 7, most people will not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God, notice that. Can I be a friend of God? It's what the Word of God says. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son while we were still sinners, while we were His enemies, that just, that blows my mind. It really does, because I know how bad I am. 
I know how bad some of you are. Amen. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. And now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has what? Made us friends with God. You know, it's amazing how many people think God can't love me. I can't go to a church because the roof would fall in on my head. You've met people like that. As a matter of fact, you may be that person. Well, you know what? I don't hate God, but I, God ain't got no use for me. And I would tell you, you're missing the whole point. God created you to love you. God created you to have that friendship and that relationship with Him. God wants to celebrate you, kind of like when J.B. Mooney would get out there in the arena and they'd announce Him and everybody, woo, clap. Do you know that when you get up in the morning, Jesus Christ is celebrating you? Why? Because you're His child. You're His friend. And He's that much in love with you. Amazing. You and I deserve a terrible judgment from God. We really do. We are sinners. We are sinners. We deserve punishment. You know? We deserve punishment. If I murder somebody, I deserve to be punished. If I rob a bank, I deserve to be punished. If I'm selling drugs, I deserve to be punished. If I'm cheering for the Longhorns, I deserve to be punished. It's just amazing what the Holy Spirit makes me say, you know? It jumps right out. We are sinners. We deserve to be punished. And that's what, that's what gets me. And yet behind, beyond all comprehension, God only no, chose to save us from our sins, but He wants to be a friend. I just... How you know there's some people you just don't want as friend? Really didn't want them as a neighbor, but you sure don't want them as your friend. But God looked at you and says, I love you. I'm crazy about you. Man, I want to hang out with you. Because you know what? He does every day. And if you just take the moment to listen, you'll actually hear Him talking to you. He speaks to your heart and wants you to know He's right there. God choosing me as His own is as crazy as J.B. Mooney and his pet bull. You talk about a conversation piece. J.B. Mooney and his pet bull. Jesus and the one he saved. That's just crazy to me. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about you, but this is who God is. And unlike the bull, the bull's bought. There's nothing he could do about it. But you know, you and I have a choice. Jesus died for us on that cross. Can I tell you right now, God doesn't have to do another thing for you. As a matter of fact, He's done everything already that He can. All that's left for salvation is for you and I to choose it. Jesus ain't dying again. It's not like there's more blood to be spilled. Jesus already died for you. <clears throat> now it's up to you and me to just say, okay, God, come into my heart. Because so I'll tell you this, this is what's amazing. How many people think if I give my heart to Jesus, I'm going to be less of a man, less of a woman, less of a person. Can I tell you, it takes more of a man or woman to live for Jesus Christ. Now listen, any old dead fish can float downstream. It takes a live one to go against the current. And if you're going to live for Jesus in this day and age, listen to me, friend, you have got to go against the current. Because that current that's going downhill is taking America downhill fast. And it takes somebody with strength being able to say, you know what, I would rather be right with God than popular in the world. And it's getting to that point. We have to choose God. We have to say, Lord, here I am. And the crazy thing is, is that when God calls us, He already factored in your stupidity. He already factored in your knuckleheadedness. He already factored in your past. He already factored in your future. Praise the Lord. And He still chose you. He still died for you. 
So it's not like God doesn't know what He's getting with this. God knew. And the crazy thing is He still said, Hey, come here. Come here. Bill Meredith, come here. God calls us by name. And He knows us. He knows us better than anybody else does. And He still says, I want you. But we got to choose it. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua confronted all the children of Israel when they came into the new land. And he said this, So fear the Lord and serve Him wholeheartedly. Put away your idols, your ancestors worship uh, when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today who you will serve. Because listen to me, friend, you're going to serve somebody. You're going to serve that old rock song says it true. You're going to serve it may be the devil or it may be the Lord or it may be yourself, but every one of us is going to serve somebody. So choose this day. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors that they serve beyond the Euphrates? Or would it be the God of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell? But as for me and my family, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So let me wrap this up with this thought. Choose God today. I don't tell you that because I'm a preacher and that's my job. No. I tell you that because I chose God one day. I knelt down on the floor of our double wide trailer where the washing machine and the deep freeze was. I got alone by myself on my knees as a high school kid who'd been running from God. I got down in there and I said, Jesus, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of making a mess of things. Because we really do think we're smarter than God. We do. We don't understand our own ignorance. God's smarter than we are. Come on, somebody. And I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, I choose you today. I choose you today. Can I tell you that from the age of 17 to now being 53 years old, I'm choosing God on a daily basis. Not because I'm a pastor. Because I need Him. I need God. I know what it's like to be in predicaments where your life is on the line. I know what it's like to watch your loved ones struggling to survive and you call out to God saying, Lord, please save them. I know what it's like about to lose my marriage, about to lose a kid, about to just wash it all, watch it all go down the toilet. God has saved me every time. Just like He's saving you. And many of you don't even understand. You don't even see it when He's moved on your behalf. You see, God loves us even when we didn't love Him. As a matter of fact, when you look at that cross right there, Jesus Christ went on that cross not when you were in love with Him, but when you despised Him. Because He knew one day you're going to find out he loves you. Amen. And realize He wasn't there to make you less of a man. He was there to make you more of a man. Ain't God good? Amen. You know what? God has never been bad to me. He's never been bad to me. There was a girl I was about to marry, Bubba. And God didn't let me. And I got really angry. Hallelujah! And you know what I'm saying. There were things I went through that didn't make sense until years later I realized God knew what He was doing. God knew what He was doing. God, why on earth are You making me pack up and leave this beautiful home in the Ozark Hills to move back 
to the one place I don't ever want to live again, Florence, Texas. And I'm having the time of my life with a church called Maxdale. See, that's how good God is. That's how good He is. And just as strange as it is for J.B. Mooney to take the bull that ruined his life as a pet, God calls you and I and says, Come here. I ain't going to kill you. I want to keep you. Bow your heads with me if you would. In this moment, I want you to know, if you don't understand anything else, Jesus Christ loves you. He's not trying to turn you into a preacher. He's not trying to make you give everything away and choose a vow of poverty and an a, a, a oath of celibacy and, and just make your life miserable. That's not who God is. As a matter of fact, at this moment, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior or you've gotten away from Him, I would tell you right now, God is chomping at the bed saying, come on, if you'll just come home, I promise you, life's going to get better. Life's going to get better. We'll pick up the pieces and we'll move on. Doesn't mean it's not going to rain on your parade some days. Doesn't mean you're not going to get a flat tire. Doesn't mean you're not going to get a wasp sting. But what it does mean is when you go through a hard time, you're no longer alone. You're no longer angry. You're no longer hopeless. There is a God that's right there moving heaven and earth on your behalf. With every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to consider for a moment. Is that you? I'm not going to embarrass you, but I am going to pray for you. Jesus is here and He's saying, I want you to choose me because I've already chosen you. Head bowed, nobody looking around. Church, start praying right now because I believe there's somebody who needs to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior today. And I want to pray with you. You're here today. And you say, Brother Mike, that's me. I need Jesus today. But nobody looking around. Would you just slip up a hand and put it back down? Nobody's calling you out for anything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right? So I know you're here today, so I want you to pray this prayer with me. There's nothing magical about it. We actually do it quite often in this church. But if you don't mean it, I'll tell you, it'll change your life. Pray this with me with your head bowed. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Like Billy Graham said, I come just as I am. Forgive me. Clean me. Take my life and make something good of it. I give you my past. I give you my present. And I give you my future. I choose you today. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me. Help me, Lord, to live for you in a right way the rest of my life. And I give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I'll tell you right now, life begins to change. The best way for it to change is you need to, number one, you need to tell somebody. You need to tell somebody, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today. Why? Because from this day forward, it's going to get different. Now, does that mean you change overnight? No. But I would pray that from a year from right now, God has been working in your life and been changing you. You need to be in a church somewhere. None of them are perfect. But I tell you, you need to be in church because we're better at this together. Do you hear me? We're better at this together. If Max Dell ain't your church, you're just here visiting, go back to a church. But I'd highly recommend this one in spite of who the preacher is. You need to be in the God's Word. 
You need to be knowing more about God and how, to, how He wants you to live for Him. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just get right back in those Gospels and get to know Jesus all over again. Get to know Jesus. The last thing is, is you need to talk to God. You need to talk to Him. Because I tell you, He's just a good dad. He wants to hear how your day's been. Does He already know? Yeah. But He still wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you. And if you give Him the opportunity, you'll hear from Him. Because He'll speak to your heart and your mind. He'll speak to your heart and mind. Today's a good day. And I'm proud of you. If you accepted Christ as your Savior, those of you that aren't been living for Jesus, proud of you. But those of you that say, Pastor Mike, I'm not ready to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, I'll tell you right now, I love you. Because you're who I once was. And what I pray is don't wait too long. Because we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Stand with me across this place. I want my prayer people to come. My elders, staff, if y'all come up here. We're going to dismiss with a word of prayer. As we dismiss, you'll be free to go. Those of you that want somebody to pray with you, you can just come up to the front and... Uh, uh, and let these gather around because I tell you, whatever you came in with, you don't have to leave with. But I do want to say a special thank you. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you for being with us here at Maxdale. Don't forget to turn in your card, get your free gift. We hope we get to see you again. And know this, God loves you. If you don't get anything else, God loves you and He's crazy about you today. He really is. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Craig Wagner, would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, as we stand here today, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you so much for all the wonderful words that you gave us this past month. Thank you for the wonderful events that we'll continue to see in this Lord. Cutie. I thought that was a mirror. I was going to come there to look at herself. Well, she can see herself. That's